Periscope has been a Twitter property for a little less than a year now. And starting today, iOS users are seeing Periscope videos appear integrated into the Twitter feed. These videos autoplay, but they don't have any sound with the autoplay. It's the kind of thing where once you kind of, you know, action on them, tap, tap the video, it's going to play the sound. And uh, yeah, Android and the web are going to see the feature later. So iOS is kind of like early through the gates once again. This was expected, though, right? I mean, this yeah. was, you know, as soon as we knew that Twitter owned Periscope, we figured pretty soon we would have Periscoping in our Twitter feeds. I'm not a huge fan of Periscope. What do you think, Scott? Um, wow, that's a good question. How do I feel about Periscope now that we've had it long enough to make a pretty educated decision about its merits? And I would probably say I don't care about Periscope anymore. <laughs> uh, I think I think it's fine as a, as this tool. Like I, I think if I if I'm in a pinch and I need to quickly do something live for a bunch of people, that, that's a good solution. Maybe the best solution because I can get mm -hmm. to my base and let them know what's happening or whatever. Um, but I, but I feel sometimes like that's not usually a problem I'm having. Usually I am able to take video, think about it later, decide if I want to post it somewhere. I've already got Twitter owned Vine to do short things with and quickly get those someplace and they're archived and I don't have to think about it or worry about it. So I'm still unsure about its need to even exist. Uh, but outside of that, having it in the feed, I guess is, is, is nice. I mean, they're, they're basically describing the same way that Facebook videos work right now, which is they'll start playing without audio. If you decide you want to hang around and see what's up, you can hit it and go. The difference here is because this isn't an archive video, like on Facebook, it doesn't automatically go back to the beginning and start playing it with the sound it will just kick in wherever the live video is. Or if it's over, it'll go play the archive of that video. And I guess I, I guess my question still is, why would I do this over just posting something to YouTube and, and tweeting that out? Why wouldn't, I mean, I guess if they own it, they need to integrate it. This makes sense for them mm -hmm. as, a, as a provider of both products. So I can't really fault them on that. But as a user, I, I don't know that this does anything for me. Yeah, this integration was pretty much one of the top feature requests uh, to Twitter, particularly since uh, since acquiring Periscope. More than 100 million broadcasts so far using Periscope. So needless to say, there are plenty of people who are finding much use of Periscope. I think there's, I think there's benefit to having, obviously, services that are about just going live on video right now. I mean, we all take pictures and share them, and that happens immediately. And yes, you can record video and edit it and post it to YouTube. That takes a lot of effort. It's nice to just hit a button, do your thing, be done, have it archived, move on. And yeah. I think there's a large economy for that. It remains to be seen like how, it, I don't know how it's going to feel once it's in my Twitter stream. Is it going to be terribly distracting or not? We'll have to wait. I mean, I think for, if you happen upon a crime or something, citizen journalism, I think that's great, but that also can be abused. And just, yeah, I think that the privacy issues here of everyone having the ability to suddenly stream video uh, on to Twitter is a little bit nerve wracking, but that's what I said when it's Periscope and Meerkat started. And you know, yeah. I haven't. I mean, you've heard some stories, but it hasn't been this horrible end to civilization like I. Had well, it is. It's basically, <laughs> it's, it's basically the potential, or I don't like. I don't want to use the word threat because it has connotations. I don't mean, but it's the potential of having constant video surveillance everywhere all the time. The difference is our utopian thinking on that in years past was that this would be governmental or it would be cameras hidden in places all around cities or whatever. As it turns out, we're all holding in our hands the thing that will bring about our destruction. In, in other words, if, if we're worried about that, that, that much um, lack of privacy or whatever that this may bring, uh, or that these kinds of technologies, these kinds of services bring, the, the genie's out of that bottle and, and mm -hmm. dancing around the room. We are all big brother, you're saying. Yes, we are each other's big brother. You're my <laughs> big sister. And any minute now, you could be in the same mall as me and catch me, you know, I don't know, throwing a dog in the fountain or whatever. Well, yeah. well <laughs> don't Scott, do that, first of all. Scott, I should tell you, I am live streaming you right now. <laughs> yes. I don't know if Warning. you knew that. Oh, crap. This is a much more <laughs> formal thing than I expected, but yes, you're right. So, so I guess that's kind of my point. I'm kind of with Jason. You made the comment, well, it's the internet. And a lot of people are like, nah, that's no way to talk about our privacy. But I kind of am with you. It's like, well, you know, we're, we're wanting these things. We want our devices to be under our control. And we want these technologies. We want to be able to videotape things and get, get quick responses and all this. So we, we have to expect this. So... It's fine. Let's have as many cameras as we want. Let's pe let people make as big a fool as of each other as we want and bring ourselves closer 
to the great <laughs> end of civilization. <laughs>